for the future. I call the Honourable Shane Jones. Akatia te kaiho tu o te fare te nakre. Puri roa tu kene o tato manuhiri ko tatu mai ki te upokotika ko tomo mai ki te ano te raiona ko tae mai ki te ma taki taki. Ia ko te hua nga nga kanohi Maori nga kai tora nga pu Maori. E paka wera wera nei me pehera nei ka kitea he rongoa. E muru ai ngā naue, i tukua mai ki a tātou mai te taenga mai o ngā pākeha me o rātou pakanga ki o tātou mātua Māori. I tēnei rangi, ko koutou, ko tatu mai ki te tuku. I ngā whakāro, i taimaha ai tātou te Māori ki a rere. Ki a uru mai ai te tahi whakāro hou, e hau tonu ai ki rotu i te hiningaro, te ngākau me te wairua o a tātou tamariki a tōna wā hei a rātou ngā taonga e kōrero ngi ake nei e tātou a hako kei te kapu o te ringa kaumātua i tēnei rā a tōna wā mā rātou e whakatinana. Nā reira nau mai, piki mai, kake mai. Tēnā koutou katoa. Sir, as I've said in Māori, I acknowledge the presence of the members of Ngāti Pāhau Wera, their leaders, and I'm taking a slightly different tack as I took on my speech in dealing with Ngāti Mania Poto, because as I predicted, I only mentioned two men and no woman, so I suffered a very severe censuring outside. <laughs> so I welcome them in their uniform strength, and uh, I welcome them as someone who comes from an area, sir, in New Zealand, who has yet to experience the full uh, range of emotions that one goes through, from having a long protracted settlement exercise and finally getting to this point, i.e. this point, the consummation with the passage of the legislation. And we from the North look forward to that experience. So I, I, I want to um, remind those of us who are in the House how far we have come. So it's important that we recite some of the names of the people related to this whānau today. Indeed, I remember in the 1970s attending, the late 1970s, attending Māori Council meetings, sir, in the um, esteemed Māori Affairs Old Select Committee room and seeing such people as Charles Mohi, seeing such people as Timi Kara and Turi Kara and a host of other, the Huata, a host of other whānau from this park. They've gone on, sir, and oh, but they were here today to witness this parliament providing an opportunity for the expression of culture, providing an opportunity, sir, for an apology, be to, apology to be made and to pass a special piece of legislation that moves on from the old paternalistic trust board model which afflicted a lot of the Māori tribes. Yeah. Now, sir, during the Second World War, attempts were made to resolve land grievances. There was the Myers Commission in my area, sir, and we see here an earlier, uh, in an earlier time a reference to the Stout and Nutter exercise. And in fairness to the people of that time, without having to pay too much or do too much, they were trying to get away with a lot. But that was the spirit of that time. And as the Attorney General and the Minister of Treaty Settlements has said, this current generation of taxpayers can never fully meet the burden if it was to be fully uh, monetarily tabulated of this bout of um, alienation, etc. But what we do here today, sir, is to pass legislation strengthening the status of this group of tangata whenua and also endowing back into their ownership either an actual asset title or other interests such as reflected in statutory instruments so that the management of catchment, the management of rivers and the improvement of the environment does not take place in spite of their existence. It takes place because of who they are and the contributions credible at an economic, social and cultural level that this group of New Zealanders, the tangata whenua of this mohaka Ngāti Pāhau Wera. And so that's something to celebrate. There may have been elements in the last parliament that weren't too keen on it. Suffice to say, they now have new jobs. So I would like to um, remind everyone that there are challenges in these settlements because they're often happening in parts of Aotearoa where the economy is not strong. And um, many of their relations at the moment, sir, 
It's been reported to us by Parikura Horomia are having a hang of the time at that Wairo freezing works. And um, for those of you who come from uh, Te Wahanga Whare Patumiti, from that particular background in the freezing works, etc., as Parikura has reported no doubt to you, and as we report back to you, we stand alongside with you. We do not want to see, in those parts of New Zealand, our people made increasingly irrelevant, so the only option they have is to disappear to Australia and our Marais get lonely and our Mokopunas grow up as Aussies, or Mozzies, not New Zealand-based Māori. So that actually increases the task, sir, the difficulty of the task of turning these settlements into a permanent legacy that generates wealth and income. Certainly if it's a part of Aotearoa where there are big economic challenges, and I can say this without a sliver of doubt because I come from such an area in the very far north. So all power to the stewards, to the governors and to the supporters. And there'll always be differences of opinion. There'll always be the challenges, etc. But unfortunately, that defines us at a very deep level as to who we are as Māori. So the other thing that um, I've said in, earlier, in an earlier speech is the centrality of rivers because rivers remind us about the difficulty of environmental management and they remind us that as we go forward and try and grow the size of our economy, we're going to rely more and more on water. And as we rely on water, that's going to throw up a new debate as to how can we manage water in such a way that people who are not as judicious in their use of water suffer a penalty and those who are clever in their use of water suffer a benefit. And it may come to pass, sir, that a future government wants to introduce a raft of rights to do with water. Well, I say in this House today, sir, the moment that that happens, we will see a new bout of Māori negotiations. Because Māori business, where it's to do with natural resources, is never over. Treaty business, where it's to do with natural resources, sir, that bottle has been uncorked, is never over. But it can be dealt with, sir, if it's dealt with very openly, in goodwill, on both sides, on both sides, after all, so rain falls from God in, e in equal distribution of Pont Saint and Sinner. So I see that, sir, when I think of rivers as a new challenge coming for uh, Tira groups such as this one and uh, other Māori groups, etc. And it may not be in the time of a number of us as parliamentarians, but unfortunately, once scarcity meets industry and water is the resource that people pursue, rest assured, an allocation debate will take place and Māori will be involved in that allocation debate. The final shape and form that the Māori presence takes in a water allocation debate, that's for the future. But don't for a moment think that it's going to be written out of the script, like, as I said, some angry farmer on a regional council wanting to dismiss the local Māoris. Unfortunately for him, his grandchildren could be marrying one. So, sir, we stand and support uh, the sitting member, uh, Parekura Horomia, support uh, Dr Sharples, who's closely related to this group, and support uh, the Minister of Treaty Settlements and think of the people who have made their own contributions to these groups. After all, it was only 1975, sir, only 1975 that we had the passage of the Treaty of Waitangi legislation, and it drifted for a while, but over the last five years, it's certainly gathered a great deal of pace. And no one on this side of the House wants to see that pace slow, I'm disappointed the Greens have a different view. Um, fortunately, the, the influence of their view is proportionally rated, related to the size of their numbers in this House. So, sir, we wish them well, and we wish uh, those who have taken a responsibility to uh, steer the waka forward. Tēnā koutou. Kia ora tātou katoa. Ora. I call the Honourable Member.